Hey guys, welcome back to another 1.19 Skyblock episode. In between the episodes, I've been AFK fishing again in the hopes mostly to get a Silk Touch book. With a Silk Touch tool, you could easily move Skulk sensors, turtle eggs, grass blocks, and a couple other things. So, this would be something I really wanted at this point, but unfortunately, didn't get one. At this point, I would actually also be willing to try to generate a Skulk sensor, for example, for an improved AFK fish farm. Just somewhere and then build a fish farm around. This would also be a possibility, of course. We might do that later on the next episode. Um, so let's check out what we actually got from fishing. Um, yeah, good news. I got a second really good fishing rod. It's basically the same type as I got before. It yeah, has the same enchantments, the same level. So in case we would lose this one, we at least have a backup. And of course, combining those two would also be quite nice. Then we could lure three and luck with the C3 if you would combine those. Then I yeah, got a couple other things like more saddles, bows weren't that interesting, and of course some enchanted books. That also mostly weren't too exciting. Infinity, sharpness 5 protection, sharpness piercing, smite, knockback loyalty, piercing 4. And then we got this one here, power quick charge and mending. So we got our first mending book finally. Um, I've been thinking what... Do I want to put Manning on the most right now? Armor, probably not that much. Uh, we can always replace it with at least similar armor. It's not like we have anything special right now. Um, tools, of course. Uh, an iron axe or iron uh, pickaxe that you could craft out of the iron ingots we get would be quite an upgrade right now. We could also put additional enchantments on. Unfortunately, don't have efficiency yet. But what I really would like to have the most would be yeah, a mending iron sword. We've got a couple of iron swords already from the mobs. Even with some enchantments, sharpness 2 even. This would be awesome to have. So we wouldn't need to yeah, make a lot of wooden swords all the time. For mending a sword, um, it would always get repaired as well. So we wouldn't need to worry about the durability anymore. Uh, additionally, we could put sweeping edge on it. Uh, sharpness we have. Unfortunately, no looting yet. So it would also help to get more iron ingots, um, but that's exactly the point right now. So we need an anvil to put any enchantments on the sword. And the anvil costs 31 iron ingots. And that would at this point mean multiple hours of yeah, farming the mob farm here. So we definitely need an upgrade. My first instinct when it came to making a better iron farm was to actually make a zombie only farm. That's the mob we actually want to kill and make a zombie reinforcement farm. My idea would have been to bring some zombies to a deep dark biome so no other mob can spawn. And then we just need to yeah, hit those zombies with a wooden sword so they wouldn't take too much damage. You can also, I'm just using this for the presentation, I use a snow golem for example, any living entity would work and then those zombies can spawn uh, reinforcement zombies. So if we do a tick warp, shouldn't take long and we can see this. There we go, got an additional zombie. You might have actually seen this mechanic being used for copper farms. There it's actually possible to make a self-sustainable farm because the reinforcement zombies would spawn more than one zombie themselves. So over time you get more and more zombies. But this unfortunately doesn't work with the zombie itself. So the way it works is if I continuously hit those zombies at some point they hit the limit of reinforcements they can call for. And the reinforcement zombies, on the other hand, have a much lower limit. So the reinforcement zombies can only spawn 0.5 additional zombies. So that means um, sooner or later the reinforcement wave um, would die because the reinforcement zombies can't call for enough reinforcements. The only reason why this actually works with the copper farms is that the reinforcement zombies that get converted into drowned mobs uh, reset their limit. So they basically act like normal mobs or zombies you just get from normal mob spawning or coming from a spawn or something like that. So they can uh, call for more than one zombie as reinforcement on average. So if you would try to adjust one of those copper farms, it just wouldn't work because they only work because of this oversight that the limit is raised again from the yeah, converted ground mobs. So 
So this also makes perfect sense. Just imagine normal gameplay. You have some zombies that you damage. They call for reinforcements. And then those reinforcements also call for more than one reinforcement. You would basically get yeah, in a zombie explosion in normal gameplay. And that's why there is this rule in the game that the reinforcements can't call for yeah, an equal number of reinforcements. Okay, so it makes perfect sense. So unfortunately, this is not really a viable option. We could maybe try around it a bit. Um, maybe take a certain amount of zombies coming from the copper farm. Uh, while we use the drowned conversion, we still get enough zombies somehow. But I feel like at this point, we're probably better off just making a normal mob farm. I already mentioned this when making the spider farm. There's actually the perfect biome for a zombie farm. In the old growth pine tiger biome, there's a higher chance that zombies spawn and especially zombie villagers spawn. So you can see zombies have a weight of 100 and zombie villagers have a weight of 25. In pretty much every other biome, including in the old growth, what is it called? Spruce tiger biome, which is almost identical to the old growth pine tiger biome. The only difference is that the 2v2 trees have a couple more leaves around. We got the normal mob spawning distribution. So zombie villagers 5 and zombies 95. I actually have no idea why this is different, but this type of biome looks like a mistake to me. But technically, this is the perfect biome for this zombie-based iron farm because we get more zombie or zombie villager spawns. But to be fair, the extra zombies we get in this type of biome isn't too large. So we'd only go for this biome in case it's actually kind of close to spawn. If you would need to walk 5,000 blocks to get to such a biome, it's probably not worth it. So you definitely would get we built the same type of farm, we would get more iron per hour, but I would expect the difference to be like 5 or 10%. If it means having to walk 20 minutes extra, it's definitely not worth it. Ideally, we would also like to have most of the mob cap being filled with zombies, so we could prevent certain mobs from spawning in the first place. For example, a spider yeah, can't spawn unless there is like a 3x3 three three of blocks. Technically, they can still spawn if there's a fence, so this is super accurate. So this would still work. And we could use the same principle to get rid of enderman spawning, just by leaving a too high gap. Technically, it would also be possible to prevent skeleton spawning, but still allow zombie spawning. But I just don't know a nice way to do this. So for a similar trick, you can pre basically prevent zombies and skeletons from spawning and only allow creepers, because they're shorter. But yeah, the zombies also actually four centimeters shorter, at least when it comes to the hitbox, compared to the skeleton, as you can see here. The skeleton is one meter ninety-nine high, while the zombie one meter ninety-five, and the witch also has the same height. Um, so, is there any way to prevent skeleton spawning? There's definitely no block that is like two centimeters thick and can be attached to the underside of a block. This would be perfect to prevent skeletons from spawning. What you could also maybe do is using boats or other entities and arrange them in a way that it would also hang into the spawning block. But I tried around a little bit of this. Mm, not really feasible. I feel like a lot of effort, it's possible, but um, yeah, not worth it, I guess. So I guess we're going to go for just a normal yeah, farm where we allow Witches, zombies, skeletons, and creepers to spawn. That should be fine. Okay, so let's get started with designing the farm. So what we need to do is definitely to bring all the zombies towards the player again, and ideally they are low health, so we can kill them with one hit. Um, how do we do this? We don't have a lot of options. Minecart's still out of reach without any iron. I think flushing is like the way to go. I don't have a better idea for this. Because anything else we don't have access to, I feel like. Right, so let's actually start from bottom. Um, we need to kill zombies, of course. We ideally would want a one by one drop shoot for them to land in, so you can easily hit them there. But there's always the problem, if you flush them, they, they would, would get stuck on top of each other. So that's why you want to also provide a, a large as possible drop shoot for the mobs. I was thinking this could be a quite promising approach. So like a two by three. So I'm just going to put a couple of mobs in there. If you actually use the sweeping attack of the sword, you can always cover like a 3x3 three three area. So if you just stand here in the middle and I'm gonna go and freak him and just use the command to attack the yeah, creepers there. 
You can hit all of the mobs inside. Okay, if you switch to the sweeping edge sword, you can also kill him. And we should also be able to pick up all the the items. My inventory is just filled. But in case I empty it and have a slot available, so we should be able to pick up all the items there. Um I guess the idea would be that we actually just fill our inventory with a couple iron so we can hmm, maybe at least AFK for a minute or so. Only strike every so often. I guess it would, it would be the way to go. Alright, then we just need to make a drop shoot that is high enough. Um still don't have any access to any yeah, other things to damage the mobs. So spawning spaces like 23 blocks above the farm. Obviously it's always good to build the farm as low as possible, but I guess we just need a traditional drop shoot, 23 blocks. All right, I'm gonna add the rest of the farm. All right, there it is. A simple flushing base general mob farm design. That is definitely an upgrade over what we have right now. All right, check it out. Uh, we got a boat clock again, an or snow ledge below. So half the time this redstone line will be triggered. It's directly hooked up to the trapdoors there. So here we just invert the signal with a two chamber system. When we flood the right side, mobs can spawn on the left and vice versa. If you check this out, there's actually a surprisingly high number of mobs incoming. Now the left side, well, there's plenty of mobs coming. This is pretty decent. It's actually surprised, so without any looting, just a plain sword, we're already getting like 20,000 items per hour. And there's still some things we could improve, for example, later getting a beacon, looting, armor stand, which will all be helpful for killing the mobs even quicker. So it's definitely pretty good. We had looting 3, we could get 50,000 items per hour with this, or even a little bit more with the other measures. We could also reduce the fall distance then. So yeah, it's actually surprisingly good. Uh, can't complain at all about this. All right, um, I also already built this farm twice. So here we got it in the old grove pine tiger biome. And over there, I think it was just a normal tiger biome. Here we get 4,900 rotten flesh power. We always get one rotten flesh per zombie, so 4,900 zombies power. And in the other biome, 4,600. So not much of a difference. Um, I expected the difference actually to be a bit higher. So that actually begs the question, is it worth it to go out several thousand blocks? Already checked um, in survival to build the farm in the, the best biome and let's say no. Um, so when it comes to iron without looting right now, we would get around 38 iron per hour. Um, the mob farm being built in any normal biome compared to a little bit over 40 in the old growth iron tiger biome. So I'd say not really worth it to travel that distance. So let's just build it in a normal biome. All right, building materials um, yeah, should be fairly straightforward. Just a lot of building blocks again. Need to go to the Cardi farm again, FK a bit, uh, to get that stuff. Uh, apart from that, a couple wooden blocks again, trapdoors, fences, boat, pressure plates. Not much, and a little bit of redstone. You have all of that stuff. All right, then I'd say let's get started in survival. Actually, the list of required materials is quite scary. So including stairs, we don't have a stone cutter yet, and slabs. That's like 5,000 prismarine blocks we need. It's definitely more than any other project so far. Um, the rest is fine, of course. Redstone dust we have and so on. Re ignore the repeating command block. I just used it in creative. Count the items. Right, I was already at the garden farm. I brought over a couple of building blocks again, but it's not nearly enough. What I also did was to AFK fish again, but this time basically no luck at all. Um, I didn't get pretty much anything of interest. Got four enchanted books, protection three, multi-shot, unbreaking, frostwalker, smite, and frostwalker. And that's it. Also the fishing rods we got weren't an upgrade in any way. The bows as well. Yep, no luck this time. All right, I guess I have to head back to the garden farm. There's definitely, I think, mm, like 50 more stacks. I think that should be enough to at least build a mob farm. And now that we have a string farm, I'm also gonna make a lot of bamboo so we can get all the scaffolding. We're gonna use scaffolding for building the next time. Also, don't worry guys, I read the hundreds of comments. I'm gonna use the sword to cut down the bamboo. So we have over 10 stacks of glowing sinks coming from the spider farm now. Okay, let's craft a bit of scaffolding. 
I think that should definitely be enough. And there we go, we got a working flushing type mob farm that is definitely improvement over the old pathfinding one. The build of this was rather uneventful, it got scared by a zombie once, but it wasn't too dangerous. Yeah, everything went according to plan, but it was a lot of work. It took about 3 hours to build all of this. Um, I was also farming already. If you check my inventory, I got an anvil. So I farmed 31 iron ingots, I did both building the farm and then farming on stream. Um, Definitely I couldn't imagine grinding out 31 iron ingots with the old farm. So even with this one here, it's still a lot of work. The farm is actually really good. So if you check it out, there's always yeah, more XP than I could even pick up. One down to this, we've got a ton of witches and they're kind of hard to kill, drink the potions all the time. So that's why we actually need a better sword to make the farm a little bit more profitable. Okay, but apart from that, it works super well. Yeah, we got two I in the ingots already, so making a couple more hoppers shouldn't be that bad with this type of farm, especially if you make the better sword. Then there's one thing that really went wrong while farming. 
Um, so I continuously like cleared my inventory because like there's so many uh, bows that the skeletons always drop and I was hoping to actually get a good iron shovel that had maybe a, a silk touch enchantment or to get a sword with a looting enchantment or something like that. Um, so I continuously cleared my inventory through like the, uh, yeah, the armor and bows into the void and I really regret not putting away my good bow. Yeah, you can probably already guess what happened. I threw my mending punch and power bow into the void. Ah, it's not really replaceable right now. Got a couple more bows from fishing that were quite decent, but they weren't as good as this one. Ah, really sucks a bit. But hopefully we, we can get it back. I mean, I just need one more, uh, at this point, one more good mending bow, and then we can combine it with the anvil now. We can make even a better one. Alright, then, yeah, let's say we actually place down the anvil somewhere. I think this place would actually be best, because there we can easily get the all the XP we need. And maybe let's get a good sword over here, fishing rods, and the enchanted books. I'm carrying all the good stuff now, so all the enchanted books, a good iron sword, and the two fishing rods. It would definitely be a shame if something happened to me right now. I'm basically also reading all of the comments I get on the videos and a lot of people said those one wide walkways always give them anxiety so just for you guys I actually made one three wide. Definitely don't plan to do it for all of them but this feels definitely a little bit more comfortable. Right, we should definitely get safely the more from this way. Alright, let's do it. Let's place down the anvil. This is by far the most expensive block I had so far in the game. Now... What should we do first? I was thinking, let's do the fishing rods first. I also looked it up, there's um, actually a 12% chance every time you use the anvil that it uh, becomes more damaged. It has three stages, so in the worst case we can use the anvil only three times and then it's broken. On the average it should last like 25 uses though. Let's see uh, how much luck we have. Alright, journey tool. Oof, why is this so expensive? Okay, but we'll take it. So then we have a yeah, really good fishing rod. This should also help a little bit of the AFK fishing. We have the levels anyway. Then I would say we immediately put mending on the sword. Nothing can go wrong. For the enemy is already damaged. What is this? The mango lock <laughs> already chipped. <laughs> then I thought I combined the two sharpness three books and combine it with the sweeping edge book. And then we put it on the, the sword. Okay, it didn't further get damaged. Alright, now we got a mending, sharpness for sweeping edge. Three sword. Okay. That should actually help out help out a lot. Killing those mobs now. No longer need to worry about the witches, hopefully. Yeah, we can nicely clear it now. Oh my god. Yeah, this actually it's gonna help so much. <laughs> really looking forward to that. I actually kept farming here at the mob farm a little bit longer because mostly it felt so good to be honest. Finally having a good sword, no longer having to use the wooden swords all the time. I think I broke over 200 of those. Let's check it out, time's broken. 227 wooden swords got broken. Yeah, now we got the, the good iron sword. It's just <laughs> such a difference. And I was a little bit lucky. It's got 14 iron ingots in total now. And I got two more enchanted iron swords. So here we have Bane of Arthropods and Unbreaking 2. I don't think Unbreaking 2 would be too helpful at this point, because we got Mending. Um, yeah, so don't think I'm gonna actually combine those two, but we got a Fire Aspect 1 sword as well. So we could make a Fire Aspect sword, which would be super helpful in killing chickens or cows. So we could actually eat steak as type of food in the game, or pork chops. So I'm definitely... yeah. Gonna do that. Jumping cost 11, okay, that's also still acceptable, I would say. Um, we can definitely, in case we get a looting sword, a looting book, still uh, put it on there as well. What would it actually cost to use Unbreaking? Ah, unbreak it's only Unbreaking 2, we would need... Is another Unbreaking 2? Let's just go for Unbreaking 3 at some point directly. Okay, let's just do that. Fire Aspect 1. I was also thinking, is there any downside of doing it? Um, usually for mob farms, when we have armor stands later, it's kind of annoying because we actually would uh, break the armor stand of the fire aspect. But at that point, I'm quite certain we will have villagers and then we can just make a good diamond sword at that point. So, yeah, let's go for it. 
All right, let's <laughs> try it out immediately. Those guys, maybe there's one with armor. Okay, at least the witch is burning. That's all we want. Okay, then let's say we go over and actually kill some animals. We need some steak. Oh good, we even have cows. Perfect. And that is the first steak. Now we would just need looting and then this would become really efficient. Some cooked chicken, pork chops. Nice. Alright, best food in the game now. We're also at a point now where it's worth thinking about breeding some pigs so we can get pork chop. And of course, uh, the long-term goal is getting a villager, so we need gold for the golden apple. Just a reminder, lightning strike hitting those pigs can convert them into zombified piglins. You can kill those for gold ingots and nuggets. Of course, a looting sword would also help with that. Then we need fewer pigs for that. Alright, then... Maybe we do that an episode after. Next episode, I kind of want to look into the AFK fishing farm with the skulk sensor and of course finally make a wandering trader platform Yo, a pork chop. so wandering trader definitely is interesting now we either want to get an oak or dark oak sapling um and anything else that would be useful at this point for example we'll definitely buy some sugar cane moss block would be quite useful there's a couple of things that are really interesting all right then yeah, a lot of progress done with this mob farm. It was <laughs> a lot of work again. Um, definitely happy with the progress. I think I'm gonna just AFK the fish farm a little bit more. Maybe we're lucky. Now we also have the better fishing rod. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.